everyone, it's Julia. I have been working on a, a pack of designs and I have it in, available in my Etsy shop. Um, and, but I wanted to share with you today the first project. There's actually going to be three different projects and three different videos using the same designs. This is the first project that we'll be working on today. It's this, this fun pillow with the sweaters, the Christmas sweaters. This is a little accent pillow that measures 9 inches by 16 inches, but you could use it on whatever size pillow you, you want to make. It would make a wonderful 18 by 18 inch square or 16 by 16 inch square. Perhaps you have a pillow insert already that you can use. I have just sewn mine, stuffed mine with my favorite Holly Phil and sewed it with my sewing machine for a little accent pillow. But this is the project we're going to be making today. I wanted to share first of all that what you're going to be getting within your PDF um, download. This will be available in my Etsy store. The link will be down below. And this is something that will come immediately to your email and you can print it off. The cover letter is something that you do not need to print off, but I wanted to take a picture of the pillow so you can see how I laid it out and just to see it in more detail. You will receive the three different sweater types. One of them looks more like a sweatshirt, one a v-neck, and then the turtleneck. On each of these you will also have the actual applique pieces. Now these are the pieces or the the outline that we'll be using to draw onto our iron-on adhesive. Some of them have more, has several different pieces to them, but that's that's it. And I also did an ideas, just maybe some give you some ideas on on how you can, what colors you can use, and just some of the things that I used to decorate my little sweaters. Another page you'll get is the actual sweatshirt appliques. On the pillow, I use the word joy, so there's a different letter in each of the sweaters with the wreath forming the O. There's also a little Santa hat and a little, a little reindeer head. These will be used in some of the other projects. The two other projects are going to be, and this is what one of one of them you you will also receive. This is a A7 size or a five inch by seven inch card, and the little applique we're going to make out of fabric. So these will be fabric cards, um, and that you can send in in an envelope, um, just for a little Christmas. This one says, "May may all your sweaters be ugly and bright." And this one says, Warm Winter Wishes. Now I just copied these off to show you on copy paper, but when we'll actually be doing this, this project, and this is going to be in a separate video, in, in the next week or so I'm going to have both of these other two projects up, so you'll be able to use the same designs for all of them. But I wanted just to share with you, this is just on copy paper, but when we actually do this project, these will be printed off on cardstock. The last project that I'm going to be doing, and I is where one of where this is going to be used, and also one of each of the of the designs. But I'm going to make a pack of four coasters. I thought that would make a wonderful hostess gift for any parties that you might have coming up. So that'll be our third project. Let's get started on the pillow. There are some supplies that you're going to be needing for this, this project. Of course, some basic sewing things like a sewing machine, pins, scissors. I also have my outer and my backing fabric and my, and my front fabric for my pillows. And I'm going to be using a cotton canvas here. This is like a drop cloth that I just pick up at the hardware store. But you can certainly use a muslin. A lot of possibilities. Maybe a denim. I think a wool would be really pretty for this also. Just whatever you have. Maybe whatever goes with your decor. Mine is cut 10 inches by 17 inches. My pillow measures 9 inches by 16 inches. My finished pillow. And so I have two pieces of my canvas. One for the front and one for the back. And then I'm also using a warm and natural batting. And I do use that um, behind the the front or the top layer of my pillows, that just gives it a nice a nice uh, I don't know nice weight, easy to work with, easy to sew on, um, and and also the stuffing 
uh, works really well underneath the batting. It, there's no, no bumps or lumps. The stuffing that I like to use is the Morning Glory. Um, it's called the Cluster Stuff. It's very um, airy. It, I'll show you what it looks like. It just has a, a, a real airy, lofty feel to it. Works well for accent pillows. But again, you, whatever is, you have available um, for the stuffing. You will need some scraps of fabric for your little sweaters and you can just decorate these and just have fun with that. This is, you know, that ugly sweater look and so you can just kind of go crazy with it. I do use my decorative stitches on some of some of my little sweaters and you will see that later. But again, if you don't have a sewing machine with decorative, decorative stitches, even a satin stitch would work or hand stitching would be great if you can do, do a little embroider on them or something. Um, of course, you're going to need some thread, and I just have just a variety of, of all-purpose threads. I do outline mine in black for my free motion, and also my free motion will draw on some of the details. You can see to the free motion on the ribbing, just adding in the details. And that is all on the pattern, and we'll be going over that as well. The last thing that you're going to need is an iron-on adhesive. I'm going to be using the Heat and Bond Light for this. Um, there are other other brands, um, again, and, and, and other other countries have different names for this. But again, it's an iron-on adhesive, and this is what you're going to be tracing your designs on before you iron it on to your onto your pillow. I'm using a just a mechanical pencil. And also, you're going to want some kind of um, fabric marking pencils. Either a Mark Be Gone, this is a water soluble one. I like use, using the Frixon pencils, Frixon pens, which will come off with, with your iron. Again, both of these are, you should test to make sure um, that they disappear the way you want them to. And this is just, I just use a little bit of this to mark a couple things before I do the free motion stitching. I am on to tracing my designs onto the heat and bond light. I have the adhesive side down and I'm tracing on the papery side of the paper. Just drawing a lot, drawing over all these little pieces and then I'm rough cutting them out. I have chosen a red sweatshirt fleece. This is from a previous upcycled project and I am ironing them onto the wrong side of the sweatshirt fleece, wrong side of your fabric. I do have a couple of pieces that I want to iron on the front side because I want that the back side to show and that's the inside of the hood and also the cuffs. So the cuffs look like they're, they're going to be rolled up. I'm on to tracing a couple of the other designs now and the other shirts and, and and ironing them onto the fabrics. I'm using a blue fabric and also a green fabric. And on to doing some of the little details here, the wreath, the bow, and the, the J and the Y. Notice that J is, is in reverse. It's because you will be ironing this on the wrong side of the fabric and you want it to show right when you cut it out. I love this little leaf fabric, green fabric for the wreath. When I'm laying these out, I start with the centerpiece just to get it in the middle. I take that, that paper off of there, off of the back of each of these pieces, and I'm just laying it out. Now I do have the um, front, of the fab front of the fabric, and also that warm and natural batting is, is behind this, this um, pillow. You can see that inside shows really well on that inside of that hood and on those cuffs. Just some fun little detail. Just adding the ribbing to this last shirt here. And adding the Y. And then we'll be ironing these down. Now this sweatshirt fleece does not iron very well and so I took some white school glue and just put a dot of glue on the back side of these. It's just such a thick fabric 
that I wasn't able to activate it very well with my with my iron. Now I'm using my friction pan and just adding some of the details, the raglan sleeve, some of the ribbing marks, and also the yoke mark on this blue, this blue sweater. Adding in the hood detail and also the cording on the sweatshirt. Now I've got my still have my two pieces here, my my top of my pillow and that warm and warm and natural, and I'm over to my sewing machine. And I'm free motioning this on. So I do have my my um, quilting foot on and I have my feed dogs dropped. You do lower the presser foot and this is normal time here so you can see how, how the, the normal speed is. And I am just outlining all my little pieces here. In a little bit it does speed up but I do want to show the entire process of, of how my how I'm doing my stitching. So you'll see the complete little pillow top here with, with all my free motion stitching. And now this is, is sped up into four times adding the detail on, on the little um, hood. I do like to go over my stitches twice. It gives a, a sketch, sketch on look. I really, I really do like going over them twice. I cut my thread there and then I'm, I'm going on to the J. Adding that ribbing. Onto the bowl, and I do add the detail in the knot of the bowl just with my stitching. Adding the raglan sleeve detail.
I've changed my foot to the applique foot, and I am doing a, it's a, a diamond shape on this yoke. I have my white thread on. This is just a tiny satin stitch. You can see it there. And now I change to red thread, and I am just doing a tiny zigzag on both sides of this diamond shape. And I forgot the pocket on this sweatshirt, so it's back to the drawing board. I'm just sketching that, that kangaroo pocket on, and we'll be ironing that onto the same sweatshirt fleece. And there you can see it. I just stitched that on. And also you can see that yoke. I love it. I love using my decorative stitches whenever I can, because you just don't use them enough. I'm trimming away any batting that's sticking out. And now it's on to closing or finishing up my pillow, laying the right sides together and pinning the, the front to the back. I will be leaving an opening on the bottom of, a, of approximately six inches. I'm going to mark that just to make sure I don't forget at the sewing machine. And I do use a back and forth stitch to lock my stitch right at that opening. And I'm taking a half inch seam allowance and trimming the corners. Now getting my, my hands in there and turning this in, in right sides out. using a little pokey tool to get the corners poked out. And then I'll be taking this to my ironing and really rolling those seams and pressing those seams flat. And also I will, will be pressing under that opening. The pillow is ready for stuffing now. Just, you can stuff your pillow however full you want it to be. Once you get your stuffing in, I, I like using these wonder clips, but you can certainly use pins as well just to close this up. I'll be taking this to my sewing machine, and I have my zipper foot on. And I'll have my needle position in the right side, and I have a small stitch. I, I decrease my stitch length, go forwards and back at the front and the start, or the start and the end of this. And I'm just my whole zipper foot is on the pillow, so just a very scant seam I am taking to close this. I'm sorry that my fingers are in the way. It's really an awkward position for my camera. But you can see it's just a real tiny little, little seam there. Our little pillow is complete. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I wanted to mention that I do have a playlist listed down below and I will be including all the videos in that playlist that will be all the projects that we'll be using these little sweater designs in. So make sure to check that out. Thank you so much everyone. I hope you have a chance to create. Bye for now.